Hello there, Reject Nation. I'm Greg Alba. And I'm John Humphrey. We're going to watch a video. Rachel Pari live at the Apollo. This is a top reward to your request from the most mysterious man at our Patreon page named J.N. Valente. He sent us over quite a large selection of what to choose from for the month. We went with this one. It's actually the lowest viewed one out of them all. We could have gone with ones that have like million views or whatever, but I was like, let's go with the one that has the, the least views because I'm most fascinated by female comedians of them all. Let's get into it. It's my 
where you feel unqualified for most of the situations you find yourself in in life. It's where it's where you feel like you don't deserve to be where you are. So I, it's rare that I feel like I deserve to be where I am. I mean, sometimes not always. Sometimes you find yourself in a gum clinic after a big weekend, and you think, yeah, this seems fair. Yeah. But I do think the universe has a way of like letting you know that you are exactly where you're meant to be. It gives you little reassurances. And this happened to me a few months ago. I was in London's glittering Soho, as I still call it. And um, I was outside a nightclub. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go in. And a young girl came up to me, right? A young girl came up to me and she said, excuse me, are you Rachel Paris? Now what you have to realise is, that's my name. For context, it's important. So she said, she said, are you Rachel Paris? And I said, oh, yes, yes I am. And she said, this is amazing. Um, I literally just found your debit card on the pavement. Over there. <laughs> so that keeps you humble. Um, you know, uh, and that's important as well. A situation that really like flared up the imposter syndrome last year was I got invited, believe it or not, to go back to my old school in Loughborough to give an inspirational speech to the graduating class. What were they thinking? Asking me to go back to give an inspirational speech. I just I got the email, I just assumed it was the education system's biggest administrative error since Michael Gove was born. Regional I, I humor. Yes, it's good to talk to young women. It is young women at my old school. I went to a girls' school. I don't know how surprising that is. I'm very aware I, I come across as a massive virgin. <laughs> I do. I know I do. And I'm not even, actually. <laughs> Thank you. I did go back uh, because they said the reasons they gave in their email why they were invited to give a speech are twofold. Number one, that I've had what they called, and I quote, an interesting career, an interesting career, which I think we can all agree makes me sound quite a lot like a high-level prostitute. <laughs> but the other reason the school said they invited me was because I'm a feminist. You know, and I am a feminist, of course I'm a feminist, of course I am. I'm obviously a feminist. Who isn't? Who isn't? Who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> First time seeing that woman. Yeah, yeah. Quite charming. Quite, She's very charming. Quite the triple threat indeed. Comedians who can do songs and actually do comedy simultaneously is one of the most impressive skills to me ever. Yeah. If you guys ever go to a musical improv show, that's one of the most mind-blowing experiences you'll ever go on right there. Yeah, when those work, man, it is insane. <laughs> and when they don't work, it's also it's insane. also enjoyable. It's quite insane for a wide variety of different reasons. Uh, I like her... Um, what is she saying? It sounds I, like Hindu. I, I don't know. At the end, I thought she differentiated Hindu versus Hindu, and I don't know if Hindu is like a slang term I'm not aware of. Hindu. Uh, uh, Dave Henderson... And this often happens when we Google search something while we're recording. The people are like, "How'd you not know, check idiots?" Dude, yeah, I mean, we'll check the comments. If you're if you're British or something, and uh, and we are missing something. Yeah. <laughs> this is like hen do like 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 poop from a hen, or something. Is she just describing the outside like a bird's cra <laughs> crapped all over this train, or is she fighting a belligerent? 
Hindu man in a cowboy hat with a penis cake. <laughs> it might be the latter of what you're talking about, and then the punchline with the final song would be Hindu. See, this is this is good comedy when you're really confused. So while editing this video, I learned that a Hindu is actually a British term for a bachelorette party, or or really like a bachelorette weekend of sorts. So uh, this just makes a whole lot more sense now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she did it smart because she set it up with going, I'm not saying Hindu. If, if you listen carefully, I'm not even saying the word Hindu. Yeah. And so it's funny every time she's saying it because it sounds like she's saying Hindu. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I wonder if she knows that a certain amount of us are going to be like, what is happening? <laughs> I've had some pretty awful train experiences. I used to ride the subway from like 15 to 18. I would ride the subway. All, maybe it was like 14 to 18, actually. I ride the subway all the time. That yeah. extra year will get you. It will. <laughs> and I remember one time, a lot of crazies on the train from all different... Usually, the common ethnicities were white, black, or Latino. Latino, that's the correct way to pronounce it. Latino. And one time, there was a, a, a black man. Black. Stop. Who came up to me, and he just, <laughs> there's always like random conflicts on the train. And one time, a black guy came up to me. He's like, yo, I heard what you said. And he had one of those things where he had like one eye and the other eye was like a, a glass eye or something. He's like, I heard what you said. And I was on, I had headphones on. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm like a 15 year old kid, right? Yeah. And he, this guy's a grown man. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. He's like, I heard you call me. And he said the N word. And then sure enough, everyone's ears around me popped up. You know, oh, and it God. wasn't just like white people. It was it's everybody. A wide variety of <laughs> it's ethnicities. Everybody there. In the train, yeah. And he just kept saying to me that oh. I heard you call me what you want to start something, and he kept saying it. And I'm like, I really didn't say anything to you. And I got off on the next stop, which was not my stop, but I just had to get out of that awkward situation as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. And that's just an LA subway station or a train. <laughs> Can imagine how it is in like other parts of the world, like UK or New York, where Riding the train is a common way of transportation. <laughs> it's not underserved. <laughs> I imagine there's a much, uh, much more daunting experience. But back to her, Rachel. I, I, there's something about her uh, comedy form that's like, I don't know, it's like this mixture of slight edge, elegant British humor with some of that dry wit. I feel like a lot of variety of humor within her but she's also very sharp in her in her timing and and the structure of her dialogue that she's communicating to us she was rather a fascinating performer she she seems like someone who i'd love to see on the stage where her humor probably even translates better being there live on a stage as opposed to watching like a youtube video of her at the apollo yeah but she's really cr i mean like her form is really crisp and what's interesting to me is i feel like a lot of the musical comedians i've seen or, or comedians who jump into music have sort of a more out there or alternative mm. act and i thought that when she was up on her feet telling jokes you know that was very in the tradition of stand-up you know it's, it's yeah. setups and punchlines and whatnot and then you know she kind of seamlessly transitions into the musical bits which are a bit more fluid and stuff like that so I thought it was cool to see because like a lot of comedians will scoff at musical comedy in general and she's clearly dead like it's not even like a Bo Burnham thing where everything is kind of on its ear and off the walls and stuff what do you think industrial piping close stay out of it she's jumping up and doing like really solid traditional stand-up and then jumping right yeah, over yeah. and doing some kind of difference. So I, I appreciated the blend she brought to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was great. Mm -hmm. I want to see more of her. I wonder where else she's been. Yeah, man. How old is this video? December 7th, 2018. So it's not that old. Yeah. I got to find more of this, this lady's work. Yeah. And her bit about feminism is also very funny. Feminism has been an ongoing topic in my life since Captain Marvel. And so <laughs> hearing this bit, I was like, ah, humor. Ah. It's nice to hear humor about feminism for a change. And the chorus of clicks as people frantically leave the video in anger <laughs> yeah. for the fear of stomaching a new idea. And the fifth one, you hate all men. <laughs> you despise all men. That's, that's optional. It's optional. That's a, that's a great joke. Yeah. Well, thanks, JN, for this request, buddy. JN's the kind of guy who will vanish, stay pledged, and then eventually show up again out of nowhere with a... With a whole, what I you see throughout the week, I'll do this thing called stream of consciousness journaling, where I just write pages for three straight pages, or I'll set a timer for fifteen minutes and just keep writing whatever random thoughts come to my mind. And J. N. Valente, he is a guy who uh, decides to not do that through a journal; he decides to do that through my Patreon inboxes. So half the time, I don't know what he's talking about. It is 
bizarre, crazy stuff. And then I'll find a couple of sentences where I'm like, okay, I can reply to that. <laughs> but then there's other parts where I'm like, oh, how do I? Yeah, I'd probably take like 20 to 30 minutes to respond to JN on, on Patreon because about 15 to 20 of those minutes are not actual typing. It's me trying to decipher what he's talking about. Then it's about five minutes of me going, I give up, and then five minutes of actually replying. <laughs> so, JN, thank you for being who you are, and I don't want that to ever change. If if you ever start replying to me and, and typing to me messages that like make perfect sense, we're going to have a major issue. I want it to be as complex as possible because when you pass on 100 years from now, because you're going to live for a very long time, yeah. when you pass on 100 years from now, those those words are going to be things that people will try to make sense of what you are. You will be perceived as a genius. Yeah, so man. keep it up, buddy. Let's start a whole new language, a whole new civilization. The Vol Valenteism. Valente, yeah. which uh, means brave and valiant. Oh, yeah. I mean, JN demonstrates those qualities, especially when airing out ideas unfiltered. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he realizes he's talking to me. <laughs> Guys, you can subscribe to The Reject Nation. Click that notification bell. And uh, we'll catch you guys later.